All right there, everyone. Are we looking at the makings of a red wave? The Republicans are poised to make some very significant gains in the Senate. That is what we'll be talking about on today's video. If this is your first time here, a very, very warm welcome to you. I post two videos a day analyzing current events and a lot of conservative trends so that you can personally and professionally flourish. And you can help support that by becoming a Patreon supporter where you get even more videos and podcasts that you can get only on Patreon. So please take a minute to avail yourselves of that and enjoy even more videos. And of course, smack that bell and subscribe button. We're on our way to 100,000 subscribers and it'll be a privilege to have you as one of them. All right. So with just a few more weeks to go before the midterms, we're getting a clearer sense of what to expect, particularly in the Senate. Here's what Here's where we're standing at this uh, point. As far as the Democrats are concerned, they believe that they had the opportunity to steal four seats from the Republicans, and that would be in Texas, Tennessee, Arizona, and Nevada. Now, the Texas seat was frankly a long shot. They, they, uh, they thought they had a shot at unseating Ted Cruz. Why they thought that, I'll never know. Cruz is pulled away from uh, from Beto. I don't think he even has a chance at this point. I think he's up by nine uh, cruises uh, over Beto. In Tennessee, the Republican Marsha Blackburn, she's pulled away from the Democratic uh, Phil Bredesen. Um, there's a recent New York Times poll that had her up by an astonishing 14 points. So again, I think we're safe in Tennessee. In Arizona, the Republican Martha McSally has uh, been surging. I think the latest poll showed that she's up by six over her Democratic opponent. And in Nevada, Dean Heller, the Republican, he's neck and neck with the Democrat Rosen. But again, Heller was behind for most of these polls over the last several weeks, and he looks like now he's surging. So we'll keep our eyes on Nevada to see how things uh, develop there. Now, for the Republican side, there are five takeaways. The Republicans are going after North Dakota, Missouri, Indiana, Montana, and Florida. As of now, as we speak, North Dakota is basically a done deal. Uh, the Republican North Dakota Kramer uh, is uh, going to trounce the Democrat Heidi Heitkamp. Uh, she's gone. She voted against Brett Kavanaugh, uh, and currently she's losing to Kramer. I think some of the polls have her 12 points down. She's toast. McCaskill, too, in Missouri, I think she's done. She voted against uh, Kavanaugh. She's down in the polls. She's fallen behind the Republican Josh Hawley. And in Florida and Indiana, Montana, the Republicans and Democrats are basically tied. But again, like in Nevada, it looks like the Republicans are surging. They were behind for a number of weeks, and now they're tied. So it appears they've begun to surge. So we'll be keeping a close eye to see if they begin to break away in those states over the next few days. Regardless, the momentum is clearly on the side of the Republicans at this point. Even editors and writers over at the uh, New York Times are admitting this. Uh, Brett Stevens is the latest. His column the other day was titled, Democrats are blowing it, comma, again. And he basically argues that their insane hysteria has both turned off voters on the one hand and energized Republicans on the other. There's been a very noticeable surge of enthusiasm among the GOP voter base after the insane hysteria that we saw from Democrats during the Kavanaugh hearings. Rasmussen has determined that 62 percent of Republicans are now more likely to vote because of the whole Kavanaugh fiasco compared to only 40 or 54 percent of Democrats. And he also found that 62 percent of all voters were angry about how the U.S. Senate treated Kavanaugh, uh, and 42% are very angry. So if the Republicans hold all their seats in Texas, Tennessee, Arizona, Nevada, they really do have the potential of picking up as many as five seats, which of course would be uh, wonderful. As for the House, right now, it's just very difficult to determine. You have polls Polls are all over the place because you're relying rather uh, heavily on local polling that's inconsistent and falls off in faulty methodology. But what we can see from Real Clear Politics is that we have about 30 toss-up seats that could go either way, which is actually good news since a few weeks back they were primarily leading uh, Democrat, leaning Democrat. So there does appear to be a clear move towards the Republican side. But again, it's difficult to determine. 
Now we need to remember that there are two major tests that help to predict what to expect in midterms, and those tests are special elections and the generic ballot. So in terms of special elections, there were a total of 10 special House races to fill the seats of congressmen who went on to uh, generally to work for the Trump administration. So we've had 10 races in 2017, 2018. And you may be surprised to find out that the total amount of elections that the Democrats won among those 10 special House races was a grand total of two. They've won two elections. Now, in fairness, I'm not counting the Roy Moore Senate debacle, where even the Republicans came out and voted against him, as it were. That was a total outlier, and nobody, nobody saw that coming. So if we just look at the 10 House races over the last 22 months or so, Republicans have won eight out of the 10, which clearly puts them in a very, very good position. Again, all of them were hyped, all the races were hyped by the mainstream media's inevitable Democratic takeaways, but that never transpired. And in terms of the two elections Democrats did win, one of those elections involved only Democrats. It was a California, uh, the 34th district seat in California. It was a runoff election with only two Democrats represented. The other one was in Pennsylvania where the Democrat won in a district that as of this November won't even exist anymore because of a court ordered uh, redistricting. So in many respects, it was an irrelevant victory. So that's the first indicator. Special elections and Republicans have won eight out of 10. The second indicator, as I mentioned, is the generic ballot. And this is where pollsters ask constituents uh, who they were planning on voting for in their district, the Republican or the Democrat. No names, no specific candidates, just party affiliation. And the generic ballot at one point favored the Democrats by like 15, 17 points. Now it's begun to shrink such that Rasmussen has them dead even, 45% Democrats, 45% Republicans. Last week, Rasmussen had the Democrats leading the generic ballot by only five points. So this is an extraordinary surge on the part of the Republicans. The, the moment seems to have, momentum has clearly seemed to have shifted to the Republicans in the last few weeks leading up to the midterms. We're seeing this too in terms of what's called the enthusiasm uh, gap. In September, the Democrats were 12 points ahead in terms of their commitment, their enthusiasm in going to the polls. Now, as of the last few days, that gap has been completely wiped out. It's disappeared. It's been erased. It's gone. Both parties are tied in terms of their enthusiasm. The Republicans are every bit as excited and charged, if not more so, to get to the voting booth and vote for the Republican candidates to stick it to the Democrats. In addition, I think the GOP has been very effective in branding the Democrats as vitriolic and hysterical. I think most people were shocked at the way the Democratic base acted during the Kavanaugh hearings. And I think it both galvanized Republicans and turned off independents, which means the potential of some very, very big gains for conservatives and for the GOP in the coming weeks. So, of course, we'll be keeping our eyes on the polls and the trends as uh, we're leading up uh, to the midterms. But right now, things look very, very good for the Republicans. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Click on our Patreon link below. Become a monthly supporter of this channel and help us to continue to analyze current events and a lot of conservative trends so that you can personally and professionally flourish. God bless.